Act One, Tableau One, outside the cathedral. Tell Jasper I am much distressed by his indisposition. Tell him the Dean specifically inquired after him. I will, Mr. Dean. It was so very sudden. Yes, oh yes. Up to the time of the attack seized him, I thought I had never heard him sing so finely. It seemed that throughout the whole service, his eyes were fixed upon Mr. Drood. Jasper is devoted to his nephew. His whole life is centered upon him. Truly. And yet, we should be aware of yielding to these earthly ties. Ah, oh, my dinner bell. And you will not forget, Chris Barkle, to bring me word of Mr. Jasper. I will not forget. Oh, Who is that who ran to Mr. Jasper when he fainted? Oh, that was his nephew, young Edwin Drood. Didn't you know, Neville? He arrived last night. Yes, but only on a flying visit. He leaves tomorrow. I think Mr. Jasper told me. The girls have been teasing Rose about him all morning. Oh, so that's the young man to whom Miss Budd is engaged? Hardly. So landless, by the wish of the dead parents of both, they are betrothed. But the pledge is not binding on either. Not binding on either? Not unless they mutually make it so, and that they have to decide that before the end of the year. He seems pretty confident of the decision uh, by his manner towards her. You are watching them in church. <laughs> yes, I was watching them. I'm not prejudiced in his favor. Hush, Neville, you don't know him. No, and I hardly think I want to. I wish, Landless, you would try to cure those passionate prejudices of yours. I will try, ma'am, but... I don't think I shall ever like Mr. Drood. Oh, Miss Twinkleton, your young ladies have already returned to the nun's house under the watchful guardianship of Mrs. Tisher. Oh, I thank you, Miss Crisparkle. Uh, Rosa waited for you, uh, Mr. Drood, who has been detained, uh, and in the circumstances, I deemed it right to remain. Now, Miss Landers, I think you and I uh, may return. Then am I to look after Miss Budd? Well, Mr. Drood has pled, pleaded for the privilege of uh, professing uh, Miss Budd's return by a brief promenade in the close. Must I stay? It's so absurd. There is much in the conduct permitted to uh, those who are betrothed, or should I say, provisionally betrothed that cannot be justified on grounds of pure reason. But the strictest decorum has in all ages recognized the propriety of occasional association in some cases. Uh, come, Miss Landers, you and I may return. Good morning. Neville, will you walk home with us? I think I'll wait for Miss Crisparkle. We will look in on the Dean on our way. Ah, Dirtles, I didn't see you in church this morning. Dirtles doesn't go to church to be seen, though there be some folks as may. Dirtles knows better. Ah, then I must have missed you. That's very likely, but there ain't much of the day or night when Dirtles ain't in the cathedral. Sometimes down below with the old uns, sometimes up above on the tower top, but Dirtles is never far away. I must make you known to Dirtles, Landless. He is one of the institutions of Cloisterham. He knows more about the crypt and the monuments than any other living authority. My pupil, Mr. Landless, has come to reside among us, Dirtles. I wouldn't if I was him. We're a heavy lot. I hope I see you well. I've got a little touch of the Twentium in me. Thank you all the same. You mean the rheumatism, Dirtles? No, I don't, miss. I mean the tormentium. Dirtles knows what he means. None better. And it ain't to be wondered at. You get among them tombs afore it's well light of a winter morning, and keep on, as the catechism says, a walking in a, the same all the days of your life. And you'll know when Dirtles means. Ah, here's Mr. Jasper. I hope you are quite yourself again. The Dean wished me particularly to inquire. 
It was very good of the Dean. I am quite well. Oh, he's all right now. And tomorrow you'll see he'll be the merriest of hosts, won't you, Jack? Dear boy, always when you're by, always merry then. I confess you alarmed me. It was so very sudden. Oh, it was nothing. You make too much of it, I assure you. Oh, come, that's all very well, but you would have fallen if I hadn't run to you. And your face was deadly pale, wasn't it, Rosa? I didn't see Mr. Jasper's face. I'm glad, Miss Bud. Suffering is not good to look on, even when it is so slight as mine. In any case, I may tell the dean you're feeling better? Yes, yes, quite well. I've been taking a drug for pain and agony that sometimes overpowers me. And the effects of the medicine now and then steal over me like a blight or a cloud. It is past. Quite past. Then we may count on the pleasure of being your guest tomorrow? Yes. Tomorrow. And you, Mr. Lambless, of course, and your sister. Thank you. We shall be very pleased. Well, then till tonight. I believe you're the cause of it all, Dirtles. You're the culprit. Dirtles is ready to answer for what he's done. And everybody knows where to find Dirtles when he's wanted. I've heard of your midnight rambles with Mr. Jasper among the old tombs in the crypt. One night you shall take me with you. Any gentleman is welcome, if he brings liquor for two with him. And if he'll make it twice two, he's doubly welcome. Or better till, you and I will go alone, Jack, and sit in the moonlight and wait for ghosts. What do you say? Oh, why, I believe you've been scared, Jack, by the ghosts of the oldens, as Dirtles calls them. Nobody goes into the crypt tonight without Dirtles. That's flat, Mr. Drood. Take it from Dirtles. You hear? Dirtles is right. Not alone, Ned. Not alone. Uh, Eddie, I don't want you to take me home. Well, well, if you could spare me, Jack. Of course, of course, Miss Bud's wish will always be a command from me. Well, then, here begins our annual lover's encounter, sanctioned by our guardians and condoned by Miss Twinkleton. Come, Rosa. Twice round the close, and then back to the Twinkleton jail. Don't be late for lunch. Oh, I shan't be long. We are much more expeditious than common lovers. Even when we quarrel, it doesn't take long. Then, till tonight, Miss Bud. Ah, yes. And then Rosa shall sing to us, so that I may judge how she has advanced under your tuition. Oh, come, Eddie, let us go. Your humble servant. There's nothing half so sweet in life. You know the rest, eh, Rosa? Nothing half so sweet in life. They looks happy enough, but they've got to go the same way sooner or later. What way? The way of the old ones, as lies dumb down there in the crypt. Why do you say that now? Why do you say it to me? When Dirtle speaks, he don't pick or choose his time, Mr. Jasper. And what Dirtle says is for all the world to hear. They've got to come to it. Pray God, not yet. That's as may be. Now or later, Dirtle's is ready for him when the Lord wills. Yes, when the Lord wills. Dirtles has been on the track of another of the old ones, Mr. Jasper. What do you mean? You know the monument by the seventh pillar, as we noticed the other day in the crypt. Yes, with the inscription almost erased from the stone. Well, yesterday, I takes my hammer, as my habit is, and taps like this. What do I find? Solid. I go on tapping. Solid still. Tap again, hollow. Tap again, solid in hollow. Tap, 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 to try it better. Solid in hollow, sure enough. Then the inscription was false, so the body had been removed. 
Dirtles knows better. The body has been there right enough. Buried most like in one of those plague times of the long ago. How can you tell that? Because when I come to rummage on the heap, this is what I find. That's the way of quicklime. It'll eat your boots, and with a little handy stirring your bones, too. But it won't touch this. That's metal. Will you have it, Mr. Jasper? No. No, put it away. Put it away. I thought as how you might like to give it to your nephew. He seems to take an interest in the old uns. My nephew wears no jewelry and never would. Nothing but his watch and scarf pin. I gave him when he was a boy. What was that? Witty witty when I catches him or er then. Witty witty why then he don't go then I shy. Witty witty make cook warning. It's deputy. Is that the F who followed us the other night? That's him. What are you doing to this man? Making a cock shy of him. Give me those stones in your hand. I'll give them down your throat if you come catching hold of me. I'll smash your eyes if you don't look out. What has this man done to you? Well, he wouldn't go home last night. What's that to you? It's my living. He gives me a half penny to pelt him home if I catches him out too late. So I'm practicing for tonight. Hold your hand still or I'll kill you. Turtles, is this true what the baby devil says? Deputy's my name. I deputy. My own brother to Peter, the old boy. But Dirtles has given him an object in life. At which he takes aim. I I'm a manservant up at the Traveler's Twopenny in Gasworks Gardens. All the men servants in Traveler's Lodgings is called deputy. And when the Traveler's is all abed, I come out for my elf. You never cried with the warning last night before you began to throw. You lie, I did, and now you owes me three pence. Go home then, and you shall have it. Dirtles pays his way. No man can say to the contrary. Right. Witty witty when I catch them are then witty witty when. Well then, till I calls, and remember. All who brings liquor for two is welcome. If for twice two, why them, they're doubly welcome, as aforesaid. Edwin and Rosa are back again. I'll be moving. When would you come among the old uns again? Tomorrow night. Folks say that you think too much of that nephew of yours. Do they? Maybe they're right. Tomorrow night. Dirtles won't fail you. Dirtles is a man of his word. All the world knows that, as aforesaid. Love the young dream. What can such a love as his be? Love of a boy. Compared with the passion that burns and eats at my heart like a flame? If only he knew. He would take warning in time. Well, according to custom, we can't get on, Rosa. Oh, should we? Well, I suppose our parents were very nice and meant very well, but oh, how can dead people know what living people want? Even living people don't always know what they want. They sometimes know what they don't want. If that's intended for me, I think it's hardly polite. Oh, I didn't mean to be rude. I didn't, indeed. But it's all too absurd. What is absurd? Why, that everyone should look upon us as engaged, and yet you've never really proposed, and I've never really accepted you. I suppose it's too late now. Yes, it's too late now. And even if it weren't, I wouldn't like to be proposed to on a silly seat like this. And I wouldn't like to be refused on any sort of seat. Do you know, Eddie, I sometimes think we should get on so much better if we each pretended to be engaged to somebody else. There can be no harm in trying. Oh, what fun. <laughs> Is she nice? Charming. Tall, I suppose. 
Well, a good deal taller than someone else I know. Inclined to be gawky. Small or tilted. I know. Long, pale nose with a red knob right in the middle. Mm, nothing of the sort. Oh, but of course, she can powder it. Oh, she would scorn to powder it. How stupid. Is she stupid in everything? No, only in caring for me. I dare say that seems stupid enough in your eyes. I, I'm tired of her. Don't let's play anymore. But we've said nothing of the mysterious being you love. I love no one. Well, then of the man you who so passionately loves you, let me try to describe him. No, no, don't. Please don't. If you do, I'll never forgive you. Rosa, you're crying. C come, let's be friends. I wish we could be friends. It's because we can't, though we both try one another so. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, we should both of us have done so much better if what is to be had been left what might have been. I know I'm a stupid thing and often tease you, but I'm serious now. Ro Rosa, don't let's cheat ourselves. There's a month yet before we need finally decide. What if we stop short now? No, no, it's too late. What's that? I hear someone coming. Who is it? Why, why, it's dear old Jasper. It would break his heart. I know if you and I were to part now. Would it? Come, we'll ask him. No, no. Eddie, swear to me that you will say nothing of this to him. I want your promise of that. You have it. And now I'll run home. I'll come with you. I I'd rather go alone. Indeed I would. Goodbye, Eddie. Goodbye. Why, Jack, you're not ill again. No, never better in my life. Never better. Come, the dear old Jack. Let's in, as they say in the old plays, and make ready for this feast of tomorrow. Yes, we must be merry tomorrow. It's in your honor, Ned. And Rosa's. Yes, her too. Tableau two, Meopium Den. I've seen you do that a great many times, dearie, and always in the same way. Oh, now, do you see him? Oh, right there. Oh, it's done. I'll wager it is, and I wouldn't be him as got a blow. There, save for the idea. Least away so you've had another pipe. Oh, give it to me. Give it to me. Here it is, dearie, waiting for you. Oh, yes. That's better. That's better. It's gone now. This is better and sweeter. This is what I longed for. It's the opium makes you remember, and the opium makes you forget. Your eastern lane's beyond me. And if it weren't, it worth nothing to me. No, now you, it's all dreams with you. And you're only worth the drugs I sells you, and that's little enough in these times. <sighs> but there's some, as it worth a more maybe. Ah, there's one as maybe worth a lot when the money comes, and it's not far away. Last week he said it would be tonight, but he's past his time. I'm waiting for you, dearie. And something tells me it's not long to wait. Not so long. That's him. I'd know his knocking among a thousand. Come in, dearie, it's waiting for you. You're past your time, dearie. I was giving you up for lost. Haven't you a light? 
Yes, yes, wait, uh, I'll, fi I'll find a candle. Be quick, my time's short. Oh, it's my lungs. They're awful bad, my lungs. Well, it's worth not cabbage nets. But I know he wants it bad, lovey, and it's all ready for you. Is that the last girl I saw a week ago? The very same. He'd come every night, but he hasn't got the money. And the other man? A man fresh from a ship that was docked last night. But there's few about, and customs also poor just now. What visions can he have? Poor enough. Nothing like yours, I'll warrant. What visions do I have? Answer me. Why else should I know, Poppet? It's the opium. Can tell, not me. But they must be sweet, I'm thinking, for I've known the time when you need, you used to drop your head and sing yourself off like a bird. Here it is already. I've got a pretty, pretty many pipes ready for you, first and last, that night, Chucky. A good many. When you first came, you was quite new to it, weren't you? Yes, it was easy then. But you got it on in the world, and now you're able to take your fight with the best of them. And the worst. Is it as potent as it used to be? It's just the same. The identical same. Look here. I'm attending to you, dearie. Says you just now. Look here. Says I. I'm attending to you. I was thinking. Suppose you had something in your mind. Something you were going to do. Yes, dearie, something I was going to do. But it not quite determined to do. Yes, dearie. Might or might not do, do, do you yes. understand? Yes, yes, might or might not do. Did you do it in your fancy when you were lying here like this? Over and over again. Just like me. I've done it over and over again. I've done it hundreds of thousands of times in this room. Who do I say? Billions and billions of times. Then, great landscape and glittering procession begin with them thousand scimitars flashing in the sun. Rice ten thousand dancing girls strewing flowers as they go. They couldn't begin till this was off my mind. There's no room till then for anything else. Yes, I've done it hundreds of thousands of times. It's hoped it's to be pleasant, though, to do, is it, dearie? It is pleasant to do. When I can't bear my life, I come here to get the relief. And it is <sighs> one. It is one. Ned. Ned. Always Ned. He's listening to you, dearie. Okay, you know. I tried to warn him, but he won't be warned. He won't be warned. Uh, the fault is his and not yours, dearie. Rosa, Rosa, you shall listen. Though the whole world stood between us, I'd sweep them all away. Just you with the rest. Yes, even though you loathed me, you sh should be mine. And only. Hark. It's time. All cloisterums asleep. Not a soul stirring. Cloisterum. I've got the name at last. And now I'll hold it fast. First the watch and chain. Then the scarf pin. Lion will eat all else. That. Now, while he sleeps. What's that shadow on the wall? Uh, there's nothing, dearie. I tell you, there is. I see it every time. I, I, I've seen it a thousand times. An, an imp of hell that dogs can make the journey blindfolded in the dark. Is it the same journey? Always the same. There was a fellow traveller, dearie. Always the same, too. Always the same. Ned. Ned! <laughs> Oh. Look there where it lies without a mark. Mark. Oh. Not the sound. Now's the time. 
Now we're all still and all stark. All but one strip of moonlight by the wall. That. The rest is easy. Six steps down to the door and four beyond. Oh, it open. Oh, the cheese. How heavy it seems at last. See where they pass? Shining, glittering, see? Oh, you've got there at last, have you, dearie? They, they come in troops down myriad mountain paths, countless throngs of maidens clad in gold. It all bear one face. Rosa. Rosa? On and on through endless winding. Yes, but no fellow traveler now, dearie. No net anymore. <sighs> He'll talk no more tonight, but he said enough. Cloisterum, Rosa, Ned. Let me fix them well. Cloisterum, Rosa, Ned. Another, another. Money first, you know that. And you haven't got it tonight. Know that. You must wait till another time. Oh, curse you. Yes, I must wait. It is time to go. Ugh. I've got another ready for you, dearie. Not tonight. It's time to go. You were t talkative tonight, dearie. What did I talk of? Oh, the beautifulest things, dancing girls, and all the faraway things. Nothing else. Nothing else? Will it be the same, ne the same day next week? I, I, I don't know. Well, maybe I'll see you before. Maybe you'll not see me again. Good night! Oh, yes, dearie, I shall see you again. If not here, somewhere else. Cloisterum, Rosa, Ned. Ned won't be there when I sees you next. Act one, tableau three, the interior of Jasper's house. I fear the dining room grew rather warm. Miss Bud will find it cooler in here. Are you better, my dear? Thank you, Mrs. Crisparkle. I am quite well. It was very foolish. Pray forgive me. Can I do nothing? Nothing. Yes, leave her, I beg. She will be better when she is alone. Miss Landis is right. Uh, pray return to your guest, Mr. Jasper. I, I think you said your collections of coins were in the library. Well, of a, poor, a few poor specimens may be dignified by such a name. Perhaps Miss Bud would like to inspect them till we rejoin them. What do you say, Rosa? The intelligent occupation of mind is often efficacious in these passing attacks. And although the career of Alexander must be expurgated for the study of the young, or the coins of Syracuse issued under his reign from a harmless object of contemplation, Thank you. If you will leave me here alone with Helena, I will be better. Then we will join you. I dare say she is right. Well, come then, Miss Crisparkle. Let us plunge for a while into the tranquil waters of antiquity. Rosa, look at me. It was not the room that made you faint. Why do you say that? Because I know that. Because I could see it. It was Mr. Jasper. Oh, don't tell me of it. He terrifies me. He haunts my thoughts like a dreadful ghost. I feel as if he could pass in through the wall when he is spoken of. Has he spoken to you? Never. Then what has he done that has, should frighten you? He has made a slave of me with his looks. He has forced me to understand without saying a word, and he has forced me to keep silence without uttering a threat. When he's teaching me at the piano, he never moves his eyes from his hands. And when I sing, he never moves his eyes from my lips. 
sometimes a glaze comes over them and and then he seems to wander into a frightful sort of dream in which he seems to threaten me the most what can he threaten i don't know i have never even dared to think oh, why don't you speak to mr drood oh, i dare and eddie is devoted to him or to your guardian uh, mr gracious he's here tonight no dear i couldn't I can tell you, for you seem to give me courage, and when you are near me, I am not frightened any more. Come, let us go to Mrs. Crisparkle. Oh, and our dear Miss Twinkleton, she would never forgive us if we missed the coins of Syracuse. Yeah. <laughs> you are quite well. Uh, yes, dearest. Mr. Drood, you lost your temper. I'm sorry. But I confess to you, Mr. Gregis, I have taken a dislike to this young Mr. Neville Landless. Uh, the better reason why you should seek his good opinion. Honestly, I am indifferent to his opinion, whether good or bad. He and his sister were brought up in the East, I believe. In Ceylon, so Miss uh, Chris Barkle tells me. There is something of the East in his face, the slumbering East that hides the lightning. Such natures are not to be provoked. The provocation came from him. I object to my engagement with Miss Bud being discussed by anyone. Mm, then perhaps you will resent what I have to say. Oh, that's very different. As Rose's guardian, you have the right to speak. And as for Mr. Landless, perhaps I was hasty. I will tell him so tonight. Then we may proceed to business, Mr. Drew. I am a particularly uh, angular man and uh, of the most limited conversational powers and Therefore, with your permission, I will refer to a guiding memorandum or two, uh, which I made in anticipation of a meeting. Um, uh, well, let me see. No. Um, will, I, I believe I sent you a certified copy of the will of Rosa's father. I received it, sir. And you should have acknowledged it, but we'll let that pass. Um, okay, uh, memorandum number two, um, marriage. Uh, that will, as you are aware, embodies a, a wish, a, a hope. Uh, I might say a sentiment, but I am unfitted by the angularity of my nature from intruding into the region of sentiment that using Rosa should be betrothed. A wish that finds the same expression in the will of my own father. Precisely. That sentiment or, or project, with your permission, we will adhere to the word project, or dismissed by yourself and my ward, Miss Bud, within a month from this date. We are both aware, sir, of what you say. Hmm. Well, that disposes of memorandum number two. Um, memorandum number three. Um, oh, oh, yes. Trust. Mr. Edwin, we now approach a matter with by which the singularity of my character. I am totally unfitted to deal, but the commands of the dead are sacred. May I ask, sir, if this matter concerns Rosa and myself? It does. Um, Mr. Edwin, this ring of diamonds and rubies belonged to Rose's mother. It was removed from her dead hand in my presence with such distracted grief as that I hope that, that I may never be my lot to witness again. Hard man as I am, I, I am not hard enough for that. Even now, as I think of those bright eyes so swiftly dimmed by death, so the lasting beauty of these glittering stones seems almost cruel. Take it, Mr. Edwin. But, sir, by what title? I don't understand. 
You shall. This ring had been given to the sweet lady who was drowned um, by her sorrowing husband when they first plighted their faith. It was he who removed it from her lifeless hand. And when his own death drew near, it was he who placed it in mine. Then surely, sir, it belongs to you. That you alone can decide. The, the trust in which I received it was that when your betrothal with Miss Rosa came to maturity, I should give it to you to place upon her finger. Would it not be better we should wait? Let me claim it then. No, keep it now. But if when the end of the year comes, you should have any secret consciousness that you are committing yourself to this step only because it was the dearest wish of your dead parents, and for no other reason, then I charge you once more by the living and by the dead to return that ring to me. Such are the terms of my trust. You may count upon me, sir, to do my part truly and loyally. I do count upon you. Um, in the random number four, um, rejoin our host. <laughs> Ned, my dear fellow, Mr. Landless has something to say to you, and I'm sure you have something to say to Mr. Landless. You are right, Jack. Mr. Landless, I'm afraid I lost my temper just now. Forgive me. The fault, I think, was mine. That's frankly spoken, Neville. I'm cursed with a temper that I cannot always control. Let us say there was no fault, eh, hey, Mr. Sparkle? Or at least that it has been handsomely atoned for on both sides. Then shake hands. There. And let's go one better, Jack. Rosa and your sister are close friends. It would be a pity if you and I were less than friends. I'm off tomorrow at Cock Crow, as you know, Jack, but at Christmas, I shall, bet, I'll, I shall be back to arrange the wedding. Yes, yes, to arrange for your wedding. Uh, well, I suppose we should pledge ourselves here and now that you and I and Mr. Landless should dine together on Christmas Eve. With all my heart. What do you say? Jack, you're not listening. Oh, yes, yes, I'm listening. You and I, Mr. Landless, on Christmas Eve with all my heart. Then that's agreed. Ah, and now Rosa shall sing to us. Uh, not tonight, Eddie. Oh, but I insist. Come, Mr. Landless. You have heard Miss Bud more recently than I. Um, tonight you shall choose the song. Have a care of your pupil, Miss Crisparkle. The look in his eyes when he reported, reported upon Ned in the dining room almost frightened me. He has much to learn both in conduct and in self-control, but I think he has the will to learn. I hope so. If he and Ned ever stood in the position of rivals, I should dread the consequences. Oh, that could never be. I hope not, but take care of him. Have you made your choice, Mr. Landless? Really, not tonight, Eddie. Don't ask me. Uh, my dear, it is only right that Mr. Drood should have the opportunity of judging your accomplishments. I mean, uh, unfortunately, the more solid instruction you receive at the nun's uh, house is not susceptible to display. But in justice to Mr. Jasper, you can hardly refuse to show the degree of proficiency that you have obtained under his tuition. Come then, Jack, use your persuasion. Miss Bud needs no persuasion. Yes, that is the song I was thinking of, but I'd forgotten the name. It is called The Parting Ways. A lover's lament. Miss Bud can sing as well. Oh, it seems a pity that the songwriters should dwell on this, exclusively on this one theme of love. Is there any other? 
<clears throat> he turned his charger as he spoke beside the river shore. He gave his bridle rein take with adieu forevermore. Adieu forevermore. Why? What's the matter? Uh, I can't go on. I'm frightened. Oh, Eddie, why did you ask me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rosa. My dear Rosa, now you must learn to conquer this, this nervousness. That's it, Rosa. Rosa's not used to the audience. And then, you know, Jack, you're such an exacting master that when you watch with the utterance of every note as you did just now, upon my soul, I believe that would make anyone afraid of you. And no wonder. No wonder. <laughs> there, Jack, you hear? You would be afraid of him under similar circumstances, wouldn't you, Miss Landless? Under no circumstances. Thank you, Miss Landless. You see that I'm not quite the monster you paint me. Well, I'm afraid that Rosa is tired tonight and it is growing late. So perhaps that you will excuse us? Yes, indeed. It is late for us all. Come, sir. Perhaps, Mr. Regis, you will kindly escort Mrs. Crisparkle. I will be responsible for Miss Twinkleton. If Miss Crisparkle will accept the arm of an angular man. And Mr. Neville and I will be responsible for the young ladies. The fresh air will do you good, Rosa. I'm sleeping in the hotel tonight as I have to make an early start in the morning. Can we go the same way? So it's goodbye, old Jack, till Christmas Eve. Till Christmas Eve. Till Christmas Eve, Ned. Ned. You take no warning. Can you see nothing? There's no force in nature to quench this fire, no hand from heaven to stay this hand on earth. As they stood together, I felt my fingers at his throat. There's no power to drive our image from my brain, no, no spell to stay this hunger that gnaws in my heart, consumes me like a flame. Oh, if I can drug. Even your magic begins to fail me now. You have taught me to forget. Now renew an unending dream that one pale vision from which there is no escape. Be not until it's over. And yet for that other sweeter vision that lies beyond, I, I must yield myself up to again. Again. I can't mix it as well as the hag mixes it. If only she were here. Oh. Now it begins to work. No. No, not yet. Who is it? It's Dirtles and no other. What brings you here? Why you brings me here. And midnight brings me here, but you was asleep. I'm thinking maybe you'd like another time better. All's nights is one to dirtles. No, no, tonight. It must be tonight. Act two, tableau one, outside Jasper's house. You needn't go in yet, Eddie. Oh no, I have plenty of time. This famous triangular dinner of ours, which is to celebrate the friendship between Mr. Landless and myself, doesn't take place until six, and dear old Jack prefers to make his preparations alone. I want you to like Mr. Neville. Helena is the greatest friend I have in the world. I want to be your greatest friend, Rosa. Oh, Eddie, have you been thinking a little of what we said a month ago? I've been thinking of it all the time. 
and you have something to say to me, I know it. Yes, Eddie, something very serious. If I only knew how to begin. Don't be afraid, dear. There is no fear of our quarreling tonight. Eddie, if I were your sister, would you like me? I should always like you. Then Eddie, oh, don't think I speak for myself only because I know I'm speaking for both of us. Let me be brother and sister from this day forth. And never be husband and wife. Is this my fault? If it is, you must try to forgive me. I have trusted you lightly sometimes, but I feel very serious towards you today, Rosa. Oh, there is no fault, Eddie. But there would be if we kept silent now. We have neither of us been happy in our engagement, which was not of our making. And yet, perhaps we are both a little sorry it should end. But oh, how much better to be married now than then. Then when? When it would be too late. You would have grown to dislike me then, and you needn't dislike me now, for I shall never tease or trifle with you anymore. Rosa, perhaps I might not have found the courage to say what you have said. But you have felt it, Eddie. Tell me that. I don't want it to seem all my doing. Yes, I have felt it. A month ago, your guardian spoke to me, and, and it had me feel very serious ever since. It made me feel that I owe something better than the careless love of a careless life. During this month, for the first time, perhaps, I have thought more of you than of myself. Was it of me uh, you spoke? Of you and your mother. When we parted, he gave into my hands something that had once belonged to her. Which you were to give to me. Unless our engagement came to an end. And then? And then it was to go back to him. D don't tell me what it is, Eddie. I would rather not know. Perhaps you are right. I will return it to him when we meet. He'll understand. Well, I'm afraid he will be disappointed. And the girls who had counted so on our wedding. Yes. And Jack. By Jove, I never thought of Jack. How on earth is he going to be told? Uh, I had forgotten. Uh, he, he must be told, I suppose. My dear Rosa, who ought to be in our confidence if not Jack? He'll feel it awfully, and yet I don't know how to break it to him. Eddie, my guardian is abroad now, but as soon as he returns, he's coming down to see me. Why not leave it to him? A good idea. He will state our case far better than I could. I dare say you will think me a coward, but to tell you a secret, I am sometimes a little afraid of Jack. No, no, you are not afraid of him. Oh, my, my dear girl, you, you take me too literally. I, I only meant that he is so wrapped up in me, and this will, will come as much a blow to him that I don't know how he might take it coming from me. Yes, for every reason it better um, Mr. Greedy should tell him, and I shall be gone by then. And now, Eddie, you shall take me home. But I want you to tell me truly, nothing that I said today has hurt you. Nothing. I think more of you and better of you today than I ever thought in the old days. And let us say goodbye to those old days. I want you to kiss me tonight. God bless you, dear. Goodbye. Don't look round. Didn't you see Jack? No, where? Oh. There, under the trees. Oh, how little he could guess what our kisses meant. Poor Jack. I am cold, Eddie, let's go. I startled you. For the moment, 
That's stupid of me. I was going to wish you the compliments of the season. Thank you, and I wish you the same with all my heart. I was half afraid as I saw you in the cathedral this morning that you were suffering again. Very slightly. A passing depression, no more. There is a strange dead weight in the air today. Something impressive. I shouldn't be surprised if there were a storm brewing. It looked like it down by the river. However, you and your two guests will be able to shut out the storm and make merry over a seasonable fire. Ah, yes. Should we marry tonight? They can always drive away all the dark humors that pursue me. And Neville Landless, I know, is quite prepared to second his efforts. But I mustn't keep you, and something tells me that my own dinner hour is nearly due. A happy evening. Say, say, you were speaking of your pupil, Mr. Landless. Yes, I think you will find him wonderfully improved in many ways. He could not fail to improve under such a care as yours. And yet, once or twice during this last month, I have been tempted to put you on your guard, to give you, if I may say so, a word of warning. Of warning? Of course, I may be wrong, but the suspicion has crossed my mind. You stand me, it is no more than a suspicion. That Mr. Landless had permitted himself to regard Miss Budd as something more than his sister's friend. Jasper, since you have broached me on the subject, I will be frank with you. I believe, indeed I know, there has been some ground for your suspicion. I knew it. I was certain of it. So much Mr. Landless has confided to me himself. But I thank heaven that through the influence of his sister's beautiful nature, rather than by any help of mine, he has conquered the infatuation, completely conquered it. I hope so too. For if it were otherwise, I should dread the consequences. With Mr. Landless's nature, they might be terrible. However, you have reassured me. I will dismiss the thought from my mind. I think you may indeed, I do. However, I promise you I will be watchful. Ah, here comes Mr. Landless with his sister. I must hurry home or he and Ned will find a belated host. All the compliments of the season to your dear mother. Oh, we have just left your house, Mr. Crisparkle. I am sorry to have missed you, but I have been detained for a few moments, chatting with your host of tonight. I especially wanted to see you, and it was Helena's wish, too, that I should tell you what is in my mind. Uh, yes, it was my wish. You don't regret this meeting with young Drood. I should be sorry to hear that. No, I'm glad of it. I want him to see that my regret for what occurred a month ago is sincere and lasting. <laughs> Neville is right. I'm sure of it. But I've felt for many days past, and I feel the more now Mr. Drood has returned, that it is better I should be away from Cloister, at any rate, for a while. I hope, ma'am, you will think so, too. Then your brother has spoken to you. He has told me everything. Well, I'm glad he can have no better guide. Now, your guidance, ma'am, even Helena's influence might have been of no avail. I owe it all to you. Well, well, we'll not talk of that. At any rate, Neville, I shall set no obstacle in your way. What are your plans? I thought of starting tomorrow for a walking tour. Alone? Yes, I shall be better alone. And in a little while, I hope and believe I shall be master of myself. What say you, Miss Landless? Well, if I were in Neville's place, I should feel as he does. Then so it shall be. Thank you, ma'am. Your approval is all I need to make me sure of myself. In every way. In every way. Good night, and as I shall be off at daybreak, goodbye. Goodbye, dear. It is dark, Miss Landless. I will see you to your door. You have done much for your brother, and you can do no more. Oh, it is you who have done it all. <laughs> what is my poor wisdom compared to yours? Yours is the wisdom of love. And remember, that was the highest wisdom ever known upon this earth. As to mine... Well, the less said of that, the better. Oh, that is so like you. You will never take any thanks. Possibly because I never deserve them. <laughs> mm. 
Witty witty one, witty witty warning. It's all right. Looky yonder. I'm looking, lovey. You see that door and window? The door on the left hand through the arch? No, no, that tops is. The other window with the red light and the door at the side. Yes, yes, I see. Well, that's Jasper's. So now you know. And the door is always on the latch if you want to call and leave a card. It ain't my game, I tell you. Why not, dearie? Because I ain't going to be lifted off my legs and have my braces burst and be choked. Not by him. You can find your own way back to the lodging. Sure enough, sure enough. Then I'm off. Only remember, two pence when you leave. I shan't forget. I never forget nothing, dearie. <laughs> is this him coming? I don't want you yet. No, it's not him. <coughs> Why, what's this? Are you ill? Me lungs is weakly. Me lungs is dreadfully bad. Poor mm -hmm. me. <coughs> Poor me. My cough is rattling dry. Where do you come from? Come from London, dearie. Where are you going to? Back to London, dearie. <coughs> you are faint. My uncle's house is close <coughs> by. Let me get you something. Which house is that? Uh, there, with the red light. It's not far away and I'll help you. No, no, no. I'll get back. But if you want to help me, give me three and sixpence and I'll get back to London and trouble no one. You, you won't. I didn't say I wouldn't. It's too much, is it? Well, if you don't give me free and sixpence, don't give me a brass farden. Tonight, I don't feel I can refuse. Bless ye and thank ye, dear gentlemen. Hockey, what's your Christian name? Edwin, why do you ask? Because you've been good to me, dearie, and I like to know the names of folks as is good to me. Good night. <gasps> Whisper. Be thankful you ain't Ned. Why? Because it's a bad name to have just now. How bad a name? A threatened name. A dangerous name. The proverb says threatened men live long. Good night. <sighs> threatened men live long. Then this same Ned, whatever he is, should live to all eternity. Act two, tableau two, interior of Jasper's house. That's right, Mrs. Tope, sell for wine, old wine and plenty of it. I'm thinking you'll need it tonight, sir, with such a storm as never was whistling and howling through the town. <laughs> yes, by Jove. Listen to it as it sings in the old tower. Why, Jack, that makes more music than all your cathedral choir. Yes, and I like it more. Night of all nights. Why tonight, Mr. Jasper? Does it make me feel the snugger here with the warm fire and the red wine, eh, Ned? Ah, Jack, and good fellowship, a real Christmas Eve. Yes, and good fellowship, the best of all. Mr. Tobe, you can put that second bottle on the chimney piece. We shall know where to find it. The wind do whistle, surely. Tope, who come up, or as we should say, was blowed up by the river, says it's something terrible down there. By Jove, it must be a sight worth looking at. Landless, you haven't seen Cloisteram in a storm. When we've cracked a bottle, we'll- Not two bottles, Ned. It must be two bottles tonight. Well, then two bottles, if it must be. We might stroll round by the river before you turn in. By all means. Good idea, but you must be careful. <laughs> the banks are steep and treacherous in the wind. <laughs> Still a good idea. Oh, you left the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Yes, and the cork's strong. And I think we have everything. I know what she's waiting for. I've forgotten our annual custom on Christmas Eve. <laughs> oh! 
Oh, be quiet, Mr. Edwin. What would you say if I was to tell Miss Rosa? Oh, for, for shame, Mrs. Toad. <laughs> ah, that reminds me. Here's to our first toast. Ah, the best. Ned's future wife, Miss Rosa Bud. Say, Jack, we'll drop the preface for tonight, if you don't mind. Let's simply say Rosa. To Rosa. Miss Bud. No, no, Mr. Bandless. It was Ned himself who set the toast, and it must be drunk if he gave it. Rosa, from all lips tonight, once more, if you please, to Rosa. Mm. Now then, Jack, let's get to work. Um, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. But Mr. Neville, you lag behind. Your glass is scarcely touched. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. I have done well. Ah, but well is not well enough. We must march with equal strides towards the dazzling goal of the second bottle, eh, Jack? And that shall be steaming hot and spice as benefits the season. <laughs> But I'm afraid Mr. Neville's not in our jovial mood. Uh, then we must win him over. I don't know why, but I've sort of a reckless mood on me tonight. Come, Landless, you must help me to clear the road for dear old Jack's famous mold port. Aye. Aye. I can promise you a good brew. A right good brew. <laughs> Maybe uh, Mr. Neville's wanting to give a toast of his own. Well, by all means, a toast, another toast. Be sure we'll do with equal honor. Oh, uh, no, uh, let the one toast stand. I have no other to give. Then we'll drink to that one again, and this time, Bumpers, to Rosa. See, I believe we've hit the sources of Mr. Lenless of melancholy. There lies the difference between you. He ought to be in love, eh, Ned? <laughs> Some folk say a man doesn't always know when he's in love. Oh. Well, let's put him to the test. How does it feel to be in love? Tell him, Ned. Oh, no, no, Mr. Drude, I beg you. Landless is right. You're the philosopher, Jack. You shall explain to us both. All right. What about to do with love? Why do you ask this of me? No, no, of course not. The very idea is absurd. You could never be in love. Perhaps you're right. But I have sometimes dreamed that if I were, love to me would be like a living lava stream that would burn and bury every obstacle in its way. However near, however dear, there is nothing human to step or stay in. Nothing. Good God, Jack, what's wrong? Did you think I was in earnest? No, no. I wasn't speaking for myself. How could I? It was only an attempt, or attempt maybe, to interpret the feeling of our friend here if ever he chanced to come under the sway of tender passion and to think. I think I'm not far wrong, eh, Mr. Lemus? Why should you think so? By a hundred signs of which you yourself are half unconscious. You have the east in your eyes, Mr. Benless. The fiery east that sleeps in the windless sky, yet hides a flame the lightest breeze may kindle into life. Bravo, Jack. I think if I were in the mood, I could read your character. Oh, then let's have it, Jack. Landless shall tell us of your, if you're right or wrong. Then you shall try mine. Well. Again. No, I don't see that my character concern either you or Mr. Drood. Well, since you put it that way, it doesn't. Pray, forgive me. I had no thought of treading on forbidden ground. There's nothing to forgive, but I will ask you both if I may to leave my character out of our conversation tonight. 
Well, by all means. I thought we were met in good friendship, but um, if the merest jest of, gives you offense, well, offense I'm not of my making. Well, we'll agree to regard Mr. Neville's character as a sealed nook. Be ready for tonight. Thank you. You recognize uh, that picture, Mr. Neville? Uh, I recognize it, but it is far from flattering to the original. Huh. You are rather hard upon it. It was painted by Ned of Rosa, who made me a present of it. Oh, oh I'm very sorry. If I didn't know, Mr. Drood, it was your work, I, I, I would have... Oh, pray don't apologize. Your opinion, one way or the other, is a matter of absolute indifference to me. Ned, to be fair, I think I can see what Mr. Venless means. I think perhaps that the picture is conceived in spirit too light, careless, more especially in the view of the relations existing between them. Well, um, we'll leave those relations out of account, if you please, Jack. I assure you, I have no wish to introduce her. No, your sneer was for the painter, not for the subject. Mr. Drood, I spoke in ignorance. You must know that. I offer you a most sincere apology. I don't ask for your apology, nor do I seek your opinion on my work. Ned, my dear Ned, you are not yourself. Oh, yes, I am. I suppose now, if I were painting a portrait of your lady love... I have no well, lady love, so there the matter may end. Ah, but don't you see? Ned was only put in the case. Nothing more. Suppose, well, for instance, the force of suggestion is absurd. Suppose, for the sake of illustration, that you, Neville, were madly in love with Miss Bud. If I were in love Stop! with... Stop! Any word from Mr. Landless on that subject, I shall take an insult to her. Am I to take that as an insult to me? You can take it as you please. Ned, Ned, have a care! You forget Mr. Landless was bred in a warmer climate than you or I. <laughs> oh, hi, it's easy to see that. <laughs> But we are in England tonight, not in Ceylon. Stop! I'll not endure it. Withdraw what you have said, or by God. Mr. Mellon, give me that glass, I command you. Ned, I entreat you, be still. <laughs> oh, why did I come here? Let me go. No, you mustn't part like this. Ned, you must second me here. I do, Jack. For I know the provocation was mine. I can't tell why, but, but for the moment the wine overpowered me. I'm more myself now. Landless, forgive me. Forgive you? Okay. It is I who am ashamed of myself. Nonsense, you make too much of it. Shake hands. Mr. Neville, I insist. Come, Ned. That's right, that's right. And one more glass to seal the bond. Uh, no. no, I've drunk too much. I'll have no more. Nor I, Jack. Not another drop. <laughs> For what is to blame, though I then the fault is not yours, but mine. But there is a remedy at hand. Why not keep to your original plan? And that air will set you both right. Rushing water will cure the wine. I fear Miss Crisparkle will be waiting for me. No, it's not a stone's throw out of your way, if you are willing, Mr. Landless. By all means. Good night, Mr. Jasper. I hope you will forgive me, too. Oh, it's nothing, nothing. Be careful on the banks, Ned. Oh, I'm so again now, Jack or shall be when I come back. But I'll wager it will be cold outside, Jack. So I'll, I'll borrow this. No, oh. no, not that. Here's something warmer. Uh, uh, 
all right, anything will do. I shan't be long. Storm's not over yet. But over for them for the time. Yes. But it may spring up again at a word. And the east may wake to flame. Who knows? Who's that? Oh, oh, why I startled you, sir. It was only to ask if there was anything more you needed before I go. No, nothing, nothing more tonight. We've had a Merry, a Merry Christmas Eve evening and a Merry Christmas to you, Mrs. Hope. And we shall have a merry time when he and Miss Rosa is wedded. That'll be a day for all of us. Yes, when it comes. But you do spoil that nephew of yours, Mr. Jasper. All of Coisterham knows that. <laughs> yes, all of, all of Coisterham knows that. Good night. Oh, good night, sir. <laughs> yes. All Cloisterum knows that. Cloisterum will believe it tomorrow as it believes today. Never chances tonight. Why, Ned? Back so soon? Why do you come back so soon? I don't... I don't know that... There's something wrong with me tonight. I, I'm... I meant to go down to the river, but when we got into the air, I, oh, I felt worse. It seems as though there was a leaden weight upon my brain. It's the cold that sees you. Nothing but that. A and the wine, Jack. Don't forget the wine. Dear old Jack. Here's a poser. Did I bolt the door just now? Or, or did I not bolt the door? P upon my soul, I can't, I can't remember. Never mind. Uh -huh. I'll see to it. See. You want sleep, Ned? That's all you need. Long sleep. You're right. I, I feel like I'm dropping off here as I stand. I say, I wrote to egregious before dinner. <laughs> Funny fellow. Egregious, all angles like a kite. Lord, how heavy I feel. Your room is ready. <laughs> oh, I, I know, Jack. I, I say nice fellow, Blandless. I, I like him. My fault. All my fault. A devilish good fellow. He may be, and yet when you, he threatened you just now. Uh, threaten who? That, that reminds me. T tell me, Jack. Why is Ned a threatened name? What do you mean? <laughs> Who said it was a threatened name? Wasn't it you? I... <sighs> don't, don't, don't be angry, Jack. Uh, a mistake, that's all. I, I'm dreaming. But, but the eyes, just like yours are sometimes, Fill me as though you were looking into another world. Another world. <gasps> Do you know? I don't believe I've got the energy to take my clothes off. I, I, I'm dropping with sleep. I, I feel I could sleep till the crack of doom. So you shall, Ned, to the crack of doom. There, I'll help you. No, 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 I'm all right. Don't let anyone wake me. No one shall wake you. To the crack of doom. 
It was a good brew and has done its work well. Well, I startled you. No, no. Delighted to see you. We've been spending the evening with the Dean, and I thought I would pick up young Landless up on my way home. Gone. Ned with him. They were to go down to look at the storm on the river. Ned will drop him at your door. Then I won't keep you up, but good heavens, what's wrong? You're as pale as death. Am I? Not surprising. We've had a terrible experience. Indeed. In what way? Thank God they were friends again now, but it was awful while it lasted. You alarm me. What has happened? Mr. Sparkle, don't trust your pupil. There's something of a tiger in his dark blood. There was a moment when there was murder written upon his face. Surely you exaggerate. I wish I could think so. If he was there, the worst might have happened. Well, this is deplorable. Deplorable, but tell me how it arose. Not tonight, tomorrow. As you say, I am worn out tonight. Then I'll come around first thing in the morning. Your nephew, no doubt, will be back directly. What did you say? That, yes, 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 please God. Ned will be back directly, uh, tonight. Good night. Shall I leave the door on the latch for your nephew? Yes, yes. He'll fasten when he comes in. Why did she come? Was it a warning to save me? There's nothing that saved me now. A thousand dreams are dragging me to that one face that sends me on them all. Endure it no more. These countless cords that bind me to my task shall be loosened at last. There have been times when I thought I should shrink from this horror. Now I am glad it has come. It's done, then. There shall be no more dreams. Yes, that's the crypt. And that's the vault. I've weighed and tried them a hundred times. The darkest night, I should know them by their touch. They're safe there. They said they found their way to the river. Oh. They've forgotten the door. Terry! Who's that? Don't Who's you that know me? Where do you come from? Is it from heaven or hell? What brings you here tonight of all nights? That's it, Papa. It's the night. Hark to it. Perish and cold it is. It's really outside, and the door stood open, and the light shone red and warm in the window. So I crept in for shelter, you see, dearie. Nothing more. The light? You put me to the place for what reason? Back to me. Just to see how you were, dearie, that's all. A lie again. I brought you here. Well, then, I'll tell you, Puppet. It, it was a dream. A bad dream. Whose dream? Yours, dearie. Last time you was with me. And that's how long ago, isn't it? You had a bad dream. A cruel bad dream. And I was a fear as how something might have happened. It happened? Happened to who? To, to me? I? To you, maybe. Or maybe. Come close, dearie. Whispering's best. Maybe to Ned. Mm. Ned? Oh, don't be afraid, dearie. Your old puffer won't prattle. No fear. Leastways, not unless want drove her to it. And that could never be, not while you're alive. Alive? Foul Jade's brick. So you get nothing from me. Not a shilling, not a farthing. Go! I'm a going, but let me tell you something first. I, I, I won't hear it. Yes, dearie, you will. Only not too loud. We don't want all the world to know our secrets, do we, dearie? They would have to see you go. Rosa's lips are red and sweet, too. 
I know some, someone who would do or has done strange things for one taste of those lips. What things? Murder, maybe. Good night, dearie. Hey. I see one of them Reverend Parsons pass out as I crouched, pass out as I crouched in the shadow of the gate. Do you think he's a fancy to hear a bad dream? We can try him, Countless. Good night. You are. Moving on a step toward that door, I will stay. I thought you wanted to be rid of me. I changed my mind. I want to dream. I must tonight. Now. And so you shall. I've got it already. Brought it a brought it a purpose for you as I came along. But it cost more than it did far more. Dreadful dear it is. Pounds now for every penny before. Do you think you can pay the price? Yes, yes, whatever it is, but not now. Let let me dream now. Okay, I can wait, lovey. Maybe it'll be dearer still in a little Here while. Give it to me. Here it is. Already. But why so express tonight? You must tell your old puffer that. Because. Oh. Oh. Yes, dearie, because. Just because of nothing. Yes, yes. If not, there might have been something worse than a dream. Then I was just in time, eh, dearie? Just in time. Where's Ned? Safe asleep. Asleep, thank God. Safe. Yes, yeah, safe for tonight, but not safe for long. And I shan't be near you the next time, dearie. No. I'll keep away till it's done. Then you shall dream again. But the drug will be dreadful, dear. I'm, I'm afraid so, Puppet. Dreadful, dear, it will be then. The same journey? Isn't there another ro road in all the world? Does it always be the same? Always the identical same. And the same fellow traveler, too, eh, dearie? Always the same. Oh. Oh. Or Steary, not so loud he can hear you. Won't you be warned? Did not they warn you? And you see these hands closing on your throat, Ned? A hundred times you stood upon the brink. A hundred times when another word, another look of your eyes into hers would have set you. And you wouldn't be warned. Now it's too late. Trouble's over. I can fight no more. A thousand voices echoing in the dark have led me to where I stand tonight. A thousand chains whose links are forged in hell have bound me to my task. Where's the... That living lava stream that burns and buries every obstacle in its path must bear him upon its flood tonight. And then those lips, <laughs> those lips are mine at last. Ah, that's it, dearie. Rose's red lips at last. Great God, I must go. There's no way. Oh, Jack! Jack! What's that? It's nothing, dearie. You was dreaming. Dreaming of the sweetest, beautifulest things. Yes, but it's gone now. Aye, but here's another. Ready for you and ready for another beautiful dream. Yes, and another. Another, another till the dawn. Promise me that. It must be all dreams till the night pass, swear to me. So it shall, Puppet, all dreams till the dawn. <laughs> yes, it's the it's only the dream tonight, but tomorrow or the next day you can tell. <laughs> then when it's done, you'll want to dream again. And you shall. 
but the drug will be dreadful dear. I'm afraid so. <laughs> oh, pop it, dreadful dear it will be then. But you'll pay your old princess puffer, I'll see to that. Now, it's easy now while the wine's on him and he sleeps. But the watch and chain first and his pen. The lime will get all else, <laughs> not gold. Oh, that's done. That's done. Jack. Ye shall never meet again on this side of the grave. Look, he doesn't move. He doesn't breathe. Yeah, it's done to it. So many times it seems so hard. Now that it's over, it seems such a little thing. No struggle. No resistance, no appeal. <laughs> oh, yes, not so sorry. The sound but the sigh of the wind. That's the odd, and it's all safe. Ooh, wait, nothing. Not if it were 50 times as great. Tonight I have the strength of 50 men. <laughs> Quick. Well, strip of moonlight on the wall. How it creaks. For you to say, you have a key for the vault. Yeah. It's done. Cover it. Cover it quickly. Good God. Why should those dead eyes open at last? Throw them away. <laughs> Ready? Trapped. Oh. Oh. Ring. Good yet? Carol! Oh! Yes! Yes! It's done at last! Oh! I'll close during this day, God. Good heavens, what's wrong? I feared it. Feared it? You are ill, I knew it. You are Ill. Ill. Where is he? Ask me, have you found him? Found him? Yes, my nephew Ned. Where is he, I say? Did he not return? No. After you left me, I must have fallen asleep in my chair. It was dawn when I woke. I ran to his room. He was not in there. He had not been there. I, I fainted and fell. Your nephew had not been there. No. Where's Landless? He left home two hours ago. He must be followed. No, it's instant without a moment's delay. Jasper, what does this mean? It means murder. Act three, it's tableau one, a room inside Miss Chris Puffle's house. Six months have elapsed. Chris Puffle is not home, you say? Uh, no, sir. She went down to walk by the river. Astounding thither. Splendid. She asked me to tell you, in case you were arrived before her return, that she would be back at twelve at the latest. Hmm. 
Oh, yes. Well, huh. thank you. I, I, I expect Miss Landless with my ward, Miss Bud. Will you kindly show them in when they arrive? Yes, sir. Hmm. Linda Random, number one. A, a gentleman came, sir, just before you arrived, and said that he would call again. Name? A Datchery, sir. Large head of white hair? Oh, yes, sir. Hmm. Be good enough to tell him when he returns that I will meet him at the hotel in quarter of an hour. No, um, say 20 minutes. I will, sir. Detury. Memo number two. Hmm. Close to him. Well, I, just six months and four days since I was here. Dean well? Uh, yes, sir. Deans always are. Huh. And Miss Chris Sparkle, of course, or she wouldn't be bathing. Her wonderful constitution, and and now yes, Mister Jasper. Oh, they say he's greatly changed since his nephew's death. Uh, yes, sad. Um, well, very sad, T terrible. Um, did I hear the bell? I think so. If, as I fancy, it's Miss Landless, be good enough to show her in at once. My time is short. Yes, sir. You wish to see me, Mr. Grisius? Wish to see you. Uh, uh, yes, you're quite right. Wish to see you. I thought you were still abroad. Oh, uh, Jamaica returned a week ago, a, a long journey for a client whose good name was in peril. Happily, it was worth the journey. I, I was able to win him back his good name. I think no journey could be so long for that. Uh, I would travel to the end of the world to win back my brother's good name. Quite so. Quite so. But Rosa, where is she? I've left her with my brother in the study. Uh, they have not met since, uh... Since young Drood's murder? Then your brother has returned to just close to him. She came back last night in my entreaty. Is that wise? It was right. I know it was right. I said, wise. In his place, I should have done the same. I must accept that answer. Mr. Grisius, you don't know what he has suffered. Oh, what I have during all these months. You don't know what has happened. Well, I know something. I want to know more. On the day after Mr. Drood's... M murder? Neville was hunted down like a dog. He, he had been the last person in Mr. Drood's company on the night of Christmas Eve. And, and on that suspicion, he was followed and arrested and brought before the mayor. And discharged for want of evidence. Well, yes, and discharged uh, by Miss Chris Sparkle's advice, he left Cloisterham. I, I couldn't bear to see him suffer, but ever since the day he left, the whisper of suspicion against him has been renewed and, and fostered uh, by whom I don't know yet, but, but I will know. The very fact of his absence has made the ground of, on, of fresh insinuation. Uh, without a shred of evidence against him, he stands in the eyes of Cloisterham with the brand of murderer upon him, until at last I could bear it no longer. I felt he must face the world or skulk in hiding for all his life. That is why he returned, at my entreaty, at my command. Miss Landis, I, I, I am an angular man, and as such, um, as, su as such I am singularly unfitted to converse freely with any member of your 
inestimable sex. The weakness I fancy is inherited. I am informed and believe that my father was unable to propose to my mother till a month after they'd been married. Then it was too late. Can't explain it. I find that I can speak frankly and freely to you. Frankly and freely. You understand? I do. Since I arrived in London a week ago, I've had your brother watch daily and hourly. His every moment is known to me. For what reason? On what ground? That you shall know recently. I, I have had other others watched as well. Number one, turtles. Carpenter, stonemason. Um, number two, a strange creature, neither boy nor man, who goes by the name of deputy. And no one else? There's no one else entered on my notes as yet. And pray, what have you discovered? Mm. There, there is no discovery entered on my notes uh, as yet. Well, then uh, this person, this spy you have employed, is, is in Cloisterham now? In Cloisterham now. Uh, an old clerk of mine named Bazard, by right of birth, hatchery in virtue of histrionic assumption. Sad case is uh, very. Uh, he had a disappointed youth and writing great parts and tragedies that were never acted, and he is now employed in the congenial work of acting a great part that was never written. The first gleam in a blighted career. This, this persecution of my brother in which you have chosen to join, I regard as a cruel outrage of which he shall be told now at once. Stay, Miss Landless. Before you speak to your brother, hear me to the end. What more can you have to say? Much more, as you shall, as you shall learn. On the morning of my arrival in London, I found among a mass of other papers awaiting me, a letter from Mr. Drood. From Edwin Drood? Oh, then he is not dead. There was no murder. I fear indeed there was. It was not private, not to be formed, and, and, and was written on Christmas Eve. How can you know that? Well, the, the envelope bears the postmark of Clusterham with the date the 26th December, a date which would naturally bear if it were posted any time on Christmas Eve after the usual hour of collection, which I have ascertained to be um, five o'clock. And the letter? How can it concern my brother? Listen, and you shall judge. <sighs> I had this open earlier. Um, Pardon me. Dear sir, the day Rosa, oh good Lord, spilled my coffee on it. The day Rosa and I agreed to part, and therefore, in obedience to my sacred promise, I now return to you the ring which you have entrusted to my keeping. The ring was enclosed in the envelope. I, I, I have it here. Uh, yeah. Uh, but as to this part of the letter, I will ask you for the present to keep silent. Have thou your promise? You have. It is what follows that I beg and entrust your earnest attention. All right. I had hoped um, to surrender it to you in person. He refers, of course, to the ring. Uh, 
but since writing these lines, something has come to my knowledge that enforces me to leave Cloisterham and quit England uh, at once, um, perhaps forever. I have discovered in a quarter so unexpected and as enmity towards myself so terrible, so deadly in its purpose, that I shall not speak or write of it. It, it has stunned and crushed me, and I feel I must be long until I have had time to think what is best to do. You trusted me with your secret of the ring. I trust you now with this secret of mine. That is the end. An enmity so terrible, so deadly in its purpose. Those are his words. It, it is plain he knew well his life was threatened. But by whom? He speaks of flight. Well, is it not possible that he may have escaped? Do you believe that? No. In my heart, I am convinced he was murdered. And I? But by whom? Uh, that is what we have to discover. Why do you put that question to me? Neville is innocent. Though all the world were against him, I swear it. Miss Landis, I have been frank with you, and I expect equal frankness from you. Your, your brother, as you've told me, was the last person in Drood's company. He had had, uh, as you know, a, a passing quarrel with Drood, which may have meant much or nothing. Huh. Uh, nothing unless behind that quarrel lay some deeper cause of enmity that might have provoked this deadly purpose spoken of here. In your heart and on your honor, do you know of any such cause? There was a cause. There was? Yes. Stop. No, Thanks no, me. I will speak. Neville would not shrink from the truth, nor shall I. At the time of that quarrel, Neville was madly, passionately in love with Rosa Bud. No, no. no that oh, it is true. It is true. Uh, but is that to be taken as evidence against him in such a case as this? I didn't say so. But you think it. Well, then, there is more. Miss Landless, be advised. Say no more. Listen to me. If such a motive holds good against Neville, should it not hold good against another? Another? Mr. Jasper. Jasper? Yes. Long before Neville came to Cloisterham, and since he has been in Cloisterham, this man has pursued Rosa with a passion that terrifies her. Not in words, but, but in every look and, and act and movement, he has made her understand that he loves her. She was afraid to speak even to you, and she would have said nothing to me, but I guessed the truth, and she confessed it. If you doubt me, call her in now and ask her yourself. Uh, 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 no, uh, not now. I, I, I have an appointment at the Croiser, which absolutely must be kept, and at once. Then I will see my ward. You have told me what you have told me may mean more than you can guess. You ask me now if such a passion as your brother confessed to you should be taken as evidence in such a case as this. I tell you now deliberately, I think it might. Then you still believe in his guilt? No. For the first time, I'm convinced of his innocence. Helena! Not a word of this to her or to any living soul until I see you again tonight. Tonight? No, say, um, uh, tomorrow. Tonight I have made arrangements to visit the crypt. I hear that Mr. Jasper finds it interesting. Perhaps I will too. Has my guardian gone? Oh, he left word he would return. A Neville? He is waiting for you in the study. Helena, I wanted to see him alone because I wanted him to know in all his suffering that my faith in his innocence has never wavered. 
but when I tried to speak, he said there was something I must know that might shake that faith. Then he has told you. Yes, and it has made me sad. Oh, yes, it, it was right that you should be told. Though he knew then, as he knows now, it was a hopeless passion. But he did right to confess it to you. You believe him still? Against all the world. Oh, Rosa. Helena. I've never told you. On that Christmas Eve, when I saw him for the last time, Eddie and I had agreed to part. You didn't love him? I thought I didn't. And yet now that he is lost to me forever... I'm not sure. I was a child then, thoughtless and foolish. But the time that has passed since that terrible night has turned me into a woman, and I feel now if Eddie could come back from the grave, I would never let him go from my side again, never again. Did you tell Neville that? I couldn't. But will you? Yes. Yes, I, I will tell him. It's better that he should know. Helena, you don't hate me. No, dear. No. I love you all the more. You will find me in the garden. I shall wait for Mr. Gregis there. Mm -hmm. Poor Neville. <gasps> Why are you here? How can you ask? You know, for I have told you that I wish never to see you again. And you know, though I have never told you, that I could not obey such command, no else, I am your slave, Rosa. I will not see you, I will not see you alone. You must see me, and it shall be alone. If you call Miss Landless. Miss Landless? I saw her leave you a moment ago. She is your friend, you love her dearly. Call her back now, she will curse you as the day of your death. What is it you threaten? What can you do to harm her? Stay and I will tell you. You and her brother are one. The blow that threatens him will crush her too. Call her now, and that blow shall fall within the hour. Rosa, I love you madly. Don't, don't! Even when my dear boy was a fiance to you, I loved you madly. I worshipped you in torment for years. In the distasteful work of the day, sleepless misery of the night, Girded by sordid realities of wandering through paradises and hells of visions, carrying your image in my heart. I loved you madly. Yet, so long as he lived, I hid my secret loyally. You did not. You were false to him then, as you are false to his memory now. Not in words you will say no, but in a thousand silent, treacherous ways, you made this hateful passion known to me. You terrified me, and you know it. Do you think I could yield to such a love as you profess? Can't you see that I hate you, despise you? I will not force your love. I am content to take you as you are now of those words of scorn upon your lips and rage in your eyes. Give me yourself and your hatred. It will be enough for me. Never! Then hear my last word. I have told you my love is mad. It is so mad that had the ties between me and my dear boy been one silken thread less strong, I might have even swept him from under your side. This is horrible. Yes, even him. Judge then if any other admirer shall love you and live when his life is in my hands. What does this mean? Neville Landless has returned to Cloisterham. That is why I am here today. What has he to do with you? He loves you. I have loved you ever since he came here. Don't deny it. He has told you. He has told me today for the first time. He has chosen his time as well as he thinks. Then listen to me. <laughs> I hold his life in my hands. During these months, I've devoted myself to the discovery of my dear boy's murderer. Now I have withheld the evidence that has accumulated against him. And it lies ready to my hands. Any moment, the clue may come that will bind these separate links into a resistless chain. Then the last week, the river has been dragged again at my command. Today, tomorrow, or the next day, Neville may stand in peril of his life. It is false. He is innocent. 
Tell me that when he stands in the dock under the sentence of death. And it is you who would drive him there? No. You. You who by a word can lead him free forever. Or by a word can seal his doom. Do you understand me? Do you realize now how madly I love you? So madly that for your sake I'm willing to betray my dear boy's memory. Leave his death unavenged? Six months I've sold night and day to bring his murderer to justice. Max, I see the cord winding around his neck. <laughs> it is slowly winding now as we speak. Yet one word from you and I renounce all that I have won. One word and thought of vengeance dies consumed in my mad love for you. One word. One word. I'll not answer for that not... now. I will not answer for that now. Nor do I ask you to answer now. Tonight I shall be at the nun's house at Miss Twinkleton's invitation. Neville and his sister will be at the party. Bestow that canon thanks to show his faith in his people's innocence. <laughs> Then you also will be there. No, no, I will not. I say again, you shall. You will. You love Helen Alamus, you have no choice. And in his presence, in the presence of them all, I will take my answer from your lips. But remember, if you breathe a word of what has passed between us to any living creature, the blood shall fall as surely as the night follows the day. Do you hear? Yes, I hear. I hear. Oh, oh, let me go. Regis, I thought. Uh, quite well, uh, uh, I thank you. I, I was looking for my ward. I think I see her in the garden. Uh, yes, I can't be mistaken. There, under the shade of the cedar tree. I thank you. You have been away. I have returned. Uh, by the way, uh, there was something I had to say to you, um, let me see, um, oh yes, letter, letter, I, I, I found on my return from abroad a, a letter which had been written six months ago. Not from me, surely? No, uh, from your nephew, uh, it may interest you. It does? May I ask when it was written? Um, on uh, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, the night of his murder. You think that? And you? I'm forced to think it. Quite so. This letter speaks of a sudden resolution to quit Clostraham, to leave England. To leave England? You astound me. For what reason? Does it have no reason? He tells me that the engagement with my ward, Rosa Bud, had by mutual agreement been broken off. Broken off? When? On the day that this letter was written. On Christmas Eve. No. No. That surprises you? Yes. Yet the news you, you, you bear brings a last ray of hope. Hmm. Does it? Yes, he attempted to go away. We know that now. Is it not possible? I deceive myself, tell me, and shorten my pain. Is it not possible that finding himself in the new position, and sensitive as he always was to banter and ridicule, he may have taken a sudden flight? Such a thing is possible. Such a thing has been. I've read of cases in which people, rather than face the gossip of the idle and the impertinent, have taken themselves away and have remained long unheard of. I believe such things have happened. That's why I've had mistrust. Grave mistrust, suspicions even, of all of them pointing in one direction. But this news gives me new faith and courage. Until this possibility is absolutely dispersed, I will cling to the hope you've given me. You don't share it, I can see. I am not a hopeful man. In this, in this case, I, I, I hope you are wrong. Mr. Gregius, Jasper, I'm glad to find you together. 
Miss Parker, I have news for you. News? You remember that night six months ago when I told you I was absolutely convinced my dear boy had been murdered? And you were right. No, no, wait. I have learned tonight, for you had said nothing to me, he had resolved to go away. Poor boy. The proof is there that he did not carry out that resolve. Well, the proof lies here. Just watched. And what? And where did you come? Where did you come from? I found them half an hour ago as I was walking in by the river. The watch was caught in the timber of the wire, and the pen was sticking in some mud and ooze near the bank. You are right. This is a case of murder beyond all question. Do you feel that, Mr. Gregis? I have never doubted it. What is to be done? Now the landless returned to Cloisterham last night. I feel it is my duty to inform him of this discovery at once. What? Mr. Regis, I appeal to you. Is it prudent that a suspected person should, at this stage of the case, be told of the evidence chance of past in our hands? No, no, no. For my dear boy's sake, I protest against anything being said to Mr. Landless. Then you suspect him? No. Was there... A motive? A, a plausible motive for so terrible a crime? You can answer that, Mr. Sparkle. You must keep silent no longer. Perhaps I ought to have spoken before. Neville confessed to me that he loved Miss Budd, and he owned to a passionate feeling of jealousy toward Edwin Drood. But is that sufficient for a crime? In certain natures, I... I think it is. Then you agree with Jasper that it is wiser to tell him nothing? I agree with Mr. Jasper that a suspected person should be told nothing till the case against them is disproved or is completed. Then I yield. But I wish it to be understood that my faith in his innocence remains unshaken. That is least I may tell him and I will. Poor oh, Miss Chris Sparkle. It'll be a terrible blow to her. I'm afraid the case against this youth bears an ugly look. If you must be just, everything seems to point to only one solution of this mystery, yet well, there remains any room for doubt. Quite so. What now you, do you assume to have seen the motive of the murderer in removing those objects from the person of his victim? and flinging them into the well. There can only be one motive. How the body was disposed of, we don't know yet, but may have been so disfigured in the face after death that these things alone could make identification possible. You mean that uh, if, for instance, uh, the body had been buried in quicklime, all trace would have disappeared? You are right. I had not thought of that. You were right. He wore no other ornament that I can vouch for. Stay. I happen to know that he had upon him that day something more. Something more? Yes. Something that uh, once belonged to Rose's dead mother. Something which, if their engagement had been confirmed, she would have given to Rosa himself. But he did not. Give it to her. What was it? What was it, I say? A ruby. A diamond ring. <laughs> no. no. It's just you the pain will. that passed. Okay. Will pass the pain and all the agony that sometimes seizes me, but... Tableau two, the crypt. 
Four steps and no more. Have a care of the last step. It ain't all Dirtles could wish. Uh, thank you. I, I can see my way now. Um, and so this is the crypt. That's very interesting. This is the crypt, right and sure. And this is Dirtles, well known to all. And this here is an honorable gentleman that's versed in law. Is Dirtles correct? In every particular. Well, very well then. What Dirtles says is before we goes further. An understanding's an understanding. So speaks the law and the prophets. I don't quite take your meaning. When you asked to visit the cathedral, what was Dirtles' words? He can see him shining letters on the wall. Him as brings liquor for two is welcome. If for twice two, why then he's doubly welcome. Them was Turtle's words as aforesaid. Ah, I understand. And, and, and here I discharge my part of the contract. <laughs> Good measure and true. And here, Dirtles yields his receipt in full. Mm. And now you're free of the old ones, one and all, great and small. Why fasten the door? As when Dirtles is in the crypt tonight, he likes to know what he's in with. He don't mind the old ones, they don't know. But he don't want them impa boys prowling around. Isn't there one of them called Deputy? Aye, Deputy. Knows him, Dirtles knows Deputy well. Interesting character. Hm? Especially when he's got a pebble or two in his hand and don't give us proper warning. But now, Mr. Gregis, as all's paid and duly receipted, what might be your pleasure? You have brought Mr. Jasper here, eh? Time and again. The last time was uh, uh, six months ago. Six months and more. Well then, uh, I want you to take me where you took him that night to, to show me what you showed him. Fair and square as your right is, seeing as how this bottle is the size required. Let me see. Yes, we'll begin with the old tower as me and Mr. Jasper began. This is the way if you're gone for the steps, which is a trying without a drain. Uh, I'll follow you. We'll come down to the old ones afterward. There's a family of them stowed away here. You, you know them all? Just as if I looked in and see them lying there. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, better unlocked. Certainly easier to go once we found the ring. Do I hope? So is it a fear? Those so eyes cannot look upon me again. Lime has destroyed all. All with this telltale jewel. I must find some light. Puffa, your eyes mistook. He ain't there. No, dearie. My eyes said true, always true. I followed him from his house, lurking behind him in the shadow of the wall, and seed him open the door with his key. Stop, you're right. Maybe he's gone up to the tower. You sure it was him? Sure, don't I know him? I bet it not then all the Reverend Passions put together. 
tell me, lovey, have you ever seen him here nights before? Yes, once. More nor six months gone. Aye, and what did he do then? You'll tell your old papa. Well, I stood outside with my hands full of stones, waiting for dirtles, which is my duty a nights. And I seed him come in and out, carrying a sack upon his back down here into the crypt. Ah, and what was in the sack? Do you know that? No. I dare not move from where I lay hiding behind a tombstone out yonder. But whatever it was, it was heavy by the look of him. Listen, lovey, I'll tell you what was in the sack. It was lime. Lime? What for? Hush, he's coming down. If we hide here and keep still, maybe he'll tell us what for. And when you came down the steps from the tower, what, what happened then? What happened then? Why, I had my bottle in my hand, just as I might be now. Mm. Lord, but that was stiffish stuff he brought. This is mere weak running water compared to it. Mr. Jasper's liquor was stronger, eh? So strong that when I finished the bottle, I lay here like a log three hours and more. Listen, what's that sound? There ain't no sound. Cause why? Cause there's no one can make no sound. Only the old ones, and they don't talk. Well, you're right. Well then, tell me um, when you woke. There was Jasper pacing up and down and shivering with the cold. Before that, but before you fell asleep, can you recall what happened? Dirtles knows what happened. There stood Mr. Jasper, where you are now, and he points to that monument, as you might. Oh, uh, you mean this one? That very one, as you've got your hand on. What's in there, he says. Nothing, I says, but one of the old ones crumpled to dust and powder. It's hollow. Prove it, he says. You've got the key. Yes, I've got the key bright enough, but Dirtles don't want no key. His hammer's his key. Tap, solid. Tap, solid still. That's the walls as is answering to my hammer. Now then, the tap will yield another note. For inside them walls, it's hollow, as I told Mr. Jasper. What's this? What's the matter? What's the matter? Everything's the matter. Hark and listen. It ain't hollow. Not hollow? What do you mean? Dirtles knows what he means. Something's been put inside that vault since Dirtles last tapped with his hammer. That's what Dirtles means. Unlock the door. Do you hear me? Are you, are you afraid? Give me the key. Hush. You said just now you heard a noise. You were right. I heard it then. Listen. There it is again. Give me the key, I Come tell you. Come away. Come away. Give me the key. Jasper. Mr. Jasper, this is a strange meeting. Strange, as you say. What brings you here? There was something I came to find, something that must be found. Was it, um, this? I got that. Yes, that. Who, what made you? Seek it here. Tonight you shall know. Act three. Tabloid three. Apartment in the nun's house. The sounds of a waltz are just dying as two or three couples enter through the curtain. Is that the last waltz? <sighs> I expect so. I heard it strike 12 a little while ago. Uh, 
And now, young ladies and young gentlemen, for on this occasion, as you will observe, uh, Miss Kushbarker, we have departed from our usual custom by the admission of a few chosen representatives of the opposite sex. Uh, bravo! <laughs> oh, Miss Jennings! And for the exhibition of such unmaidenly feeling will cause me to regret my decision. Oh, shame, shame. <laughs> oh, now, 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 now. The incident is forgotten, and if you will take our partners for the last dance. Oh, no, 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 not oh, the last. No. Oh. Positively now the last, and that in obedience to unbroken tradition, it must be Sir Roger. Uh, but, but where is Rosa? Uh, she's gone upstairs to pin her dress. I will wait here. Oh, well, I had hoped for her guardian's presence tonight and Mr. Jasper's. Mr. Gregius has sent me word that he's been detained, but he will be here, I feel sure. Well, come then. We shall expect them both in time for supper. Neville, what does this mean? I'm going. I can bear it no longer. Going? Yes. I ought never to have come. Everyone shuns me. I've moved amongst them tonight like a leper whose very touch is a taint and an infection. It's not true. Uh, but even if it were ten times true, the more reason why you should stay. No, do not ask it of me. I have suffered enough. Neville, this is the last trial. Tomorrow we will leave Cloisterham forever. But tonight we must both bear our heads high, you and I together before all the world. Come, let me take you back to your place. Ah, uh, Helena. You alone gave me courage. While you are by my side, I feel I can face the world. This note has just come, miss. I was told to give it to you at once. Thank you. It must be from my guardian. No. What is this? The clues here at last. Await me tonight, John Jasper. I knew it. I knew it. And there is no one I can speak to. No one who can help me. No one in the world. Rosa? Oh, there you are. I, what's the matter? Uh, nothing. Nothing. But there is. Oh, you have been sad all the evening. There is something haunting you. You must tell me what it is. I do. You will hate me. Rosa! But you will! Helena, this afternoon Mr. Jasper asked me to be his wife, and tonight I am to give my answer. There can be but one answer. Helena, if I were to accept him, would you utterly despise me? Oh, I would sooner see you dead at my feet. Can you conceive of no reason which would make me yield even to him? None in the world. And yet I must. I must. Rosa! No, no, I won't believe it. Was it for this that you broke with poor Edwin Drood? No, no, it was not. Indeed, it was not. Oh, is all our pretended shrinking from this man merrily a subterfuge? Oh, it was, and you can't deny it. You loved him all the time, and you were afraid to confess it. <laughs> and I thought there was no one like you in the world. Helena, if I could only tell you the reason. Yes, but you can't, for there is no reason. There can be no reason why you should consent to marry such a man, except that you love him, and that you love him. That is horrible. Horrible. Someday you will forgive me. Never. Oh, Helena. Hush, hush, they're coming. Oh, just one more. Please, Miss Twinkleton, the very last. No, no, you ladies, no. Even in the moments of unbridled pleasure, oh, the claims of discipline must not be wholly disregarded. What a shame. Miss Jennings, I should be sorry if the premature task of tomorrow should embitter the memories of tonight. Oh, Miss Twinkleton. Oh, another word, Miss Primrose, and I shall require of you 
by noon tomorrow, a full account of the laws of Meds and the Persians. Let me plead in mitigation of punishment, pray. Oh, Miss, Miss Chris Sparkle, I yield to your intercession. But the truth is that the hour allotted to these little revels has already been far exceeded. There remains only fitting time to partake of such light refreshment as our modest hospitality affords. And in this connection, I may be perhaps allowed to state that in view of the exceptional presence of members of the opposite sex, I have ordained that on this occasion, our well-loved lemonade will be supplemented by Negus of a moderate strength. Here, here, here. Oh, yes. But before we go to supper, I may perhaps be allowed to say to you one word of farewell. Oh, this is not only the last night of the half year, but it, it is also the last occasion on which I shall address you as mistress of the nun's house. From today, I lay down the scepter which I have wielded for so many years. Oh, not I trust with some advantage to those young maids I have sought to shape and to guide. Here, here, here. Here. Oh, but though I shall henceforth lay aside the heavy responsibilities which attach to the conduct of the school, I, I shall still have near me one who, oh, if preference was even permitted in this establishment, I might call my favorite pupil. Mr. Gregis has done me the honor of asking me to stand in the capacity of friend and advisor to his ward, Miss Rosa Bud. Oh, oh, yes. yes, come, my dear, I want you to be near me tonight. Oh, and now, young ladies and young gentlemen, for supper. Uh, oh, and but let me remind you before we go, and here I am sure I have the support of Miss Pris Sparkle. The true pleasure lies in moderation rather than in excess. Quite so, quite so. Young gentlemen, beware of the Negus. <laughs> Jasper, you were late. Yes, I am late. Oh, and I fear you are ill. No, I'm well, but I have something something to say to Miss Bud. Jasper, if you have anything to add to what you told me today, in heaven's name, let it not be tonight. I have something to say to Miss Bud tonight. Surely, in his sister's presence, this is needless cruelty. Miss Bud shall decide. It is her voice alone that can move me. Speak. Miss Bud. I wish it. Today, yes, it was today, I asked Miss Bud to be my wife. And tonight, as was agreed between us, she was to give me her answer. Rosa, is this true? Yes, it is true, and my answer is ready. But you shall not give it. I say you shall not. I will. I will hear before you all. Stop. Miss Landless is right. Hear first what I have to say, then answer as you will. No, let me speak now, now before it is too late. Perhaps it is already too late. Y yes, uh, too late. Regis, what does this mean? It means that uh, I have evidence in my possession that proves that the murderer of Evan Drood will be discovered at last. But you will not use it. Oh, no, you will not. My child, the law must take its course. Neville, have no fear. I have none. Yes, the law must take its course. There is a cue lacking. I can supply it. There is a missing link in the broken chain of evidence. It is here. It is safe in my keeping. But I had your promise, your oath. Too late. No voice, not even yours, can save me now. No. Now I care not who hears it. The murderer of Edwin Drood stands in this room tonight. No, no, it is false. Say it is false and hear before them all. I swear to be your wife. Say it again. For the first time. The last time. 
I swear it. It is strange. For three years, I've had no dream but to hear that one word. I have thought of nothing else, lived for nothing else. And yet now when it comes, it sounds like the voice of a bell that tolls for the dead. Oh, speak no more, you have my answer. Who would think so frail a thing as this? Child almost, whose life seems no more than the life of a flower. Do I have a man to murder? Yes, so it was with the murderer of my nephew, Edwin Drew. And the thought once entered into this mind, lay there like a thirst no waters could quench, flame that burned forever. Where others would have shrunk with sorrow from such a deed, he was only the more lord. He fed upon it day by day, hour by hour, till he had done it a thousand times in his dream. And at last, when it was done in truth, it seemed more than a dream. Water, somewhat quicker I shall choke. I beseech you, say no more. Oh, I must end it now, I must. No, no, for my sake. <laughs> Yes, for your sake. Edwin Drew was strangled on Christmas Eve. Strangled with the scarf I hold in my hand. And then the murderer, thinking to destroy all traces of his crime, took from the body the only tokens by which it might be identified. The watch, the chain, and the scarf pin that he wore were flung into the river where they were found by Miss Chris Sparkle today. And you deny it. It is true. The rest was easy. For the time in which his lifeless victim was cast would devour all clue. He was a bungler for all his cunning. The unsuspected clue which fastens the quilt of his crime upon him was discovered tonight in the crypt of the cathedral. By you, Grievous. Speak. Am I right? Yes, but... I will stake my soul that the murderer of Edwin Drood is not the man that you accuse. No, is I, John Jasper. Yes, I, who once loved him as my own son. Act four, tableau one. Room at Miss Billiken's house in London. Are these the rooms Mr. Greedus has taken for us? I will not deceive you, miss. They are. Well, everything seems very neat and clean. I, I see nothing to object to, Rosa, my dear. Nothing at all. Pardon me, miss. There's the stairs. I say it, miss, with all respect. And though never guessing, 60 must be passed and gone. Unless your mind is prepared for the stairs, it will lead to inevitable disappointment. <laughs> you cannot place a first floor and far less a second floor on the level of a parlor. No, you cannot do it, miss. It's beyond your power and wherefore try. I think, my dear, we need not detain this uh, person of the house. <laughs> I'm sure we shall be very comfortable. Well, it's not Bond Street nor yet St. James Palace, but it's not pretended that it is. We are respectable. Dogs is not viewed with favour. Besides litter, they get stolen. Sharing suspicions is apt to creep in and unpleasantness takes place. As to meals, I did think it well to mention to my cook, which I hope you will agree with, was a right precaution, that the young lady being used to what we should consider here but poor diet, had best be brought forward by degrees. Well, Rosa, my dear, you might instruct the person that uh, of the house to procure a, a, a little lamb's fry for lunch and uh, perhaps uh, a roast fowl for dinner. If you was better accustomed to butcher's meat, miss, you would not entertain the idea of a lamb's fry. <laughs> Firstly, because lambs has long been sheep. <laughs> and secondly, because there is such things as killing days and there is not. Try a little invention, miss. A, a dish of sweetbreads now, or, or a cutlet. 
Yes, thank you. That will do very well. Oh, I think, Rosa, that we will uh, go upstairs to see to our unpacking. But before retiring in the inn, as a lady should, I wish it to be understood between yourself and me that my transactions in the future is with you alone. A highly desirable arrangement, Rosa, my dear. I know no elderly lady here, miss, none. I limit myself to you totally. Are these Miss Bud's rooms? May I ask your name? Helena! Oh, my darling! <laughs> well, I'm sure. There ain't much by your leave there or with your leave. Dearest, when did you come up? This morning. Oh, and Rosa, I've something to tell you. <laughs> and I don't know how to begin. I think I can guess. And I am glad you are engaged to Mr. Crisparkle. Oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's nothing. Nothing? Oh, I mean, it's everything. Everything to me. <laughs> but that's not all I have to tell you. Is Mr. Crisparkle with you? No, he's at Cloisterham with him, uh, with Mr. Jasper. <laughs> Don't let us speak of him. But we must, Rosa, we must. Well, last night he had a seizure, which they think may end his life. Septimus went to him. He's with him now. Helena, with such a man for your husband, you must be very happy. Not in that way, dear. It can never be. It can, indeed it can. Never, never. Oh. My, my dear, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Landless. Uh, I'm just leaving Closterham. Important business. Very. Uh, thought I would just look in on my way. Everything comfortable, I trust? Everything. Rooms bright and clear, yes. Lend lady off, but I believe trustworthy, eh? I am sure she will make us quite comfortable. That's good. Well, now, uh, let me see. Um, I, yes, goodbye. Uh, uh, Mr. Gracious, uh, but surely... Uh, Precisely. Uh, fact is, I, I've lost my notes. And without my notes, I'm lost absolutely. But perhaps Miss Landis will supply me with a guiding thought. Didn't you want to tell Rosa of a visit you received this morning? Uh, of course, it was on my notes. Visit this morning. Um, huh. Well, anyway, yes, from a gentleman whose presence, I may say, surprised me. No more, uh, actually, it amazed me. Do I know him? Uh, probably, in, in point of fact, certainly. And I believe that Ms. Land is supporting the opinion that you ought to see the gentleman. Oh, yes, Rosa, you must see him. He has something to say to you concerning the uh, melancholy event of two nights ago. Oh, spare me that. I want to forget, to forget everything. It may be he has something more to say to you that you may be willing to hear, but <clears throat> I can't recall as to have entered it on my notes. Oh, can't you tell me yourself? Emphatically, no. On such a subject, if I rightly guess its nature, I, I'm singularly incompetent to speak, but I think it's possible indeed. I know it's a fact that the person in question is not pacing the streets outside. So, with your permission. Uh, no, Mr. Gracious, wait. Miss Landless, I, I entreat you. Uh, then you ha I have your leave? Absolutely. Without my notes, I... I'm useless. <laughs> Helena, I'm afraid. Afraid, darling? No, no, you mustn't be afraid. I thought I had borne all there was to bear. Now I feel some new terror is waiting for me. Listen, dearest, two days ago you told me that if Edwin Drood could come back to you, you would be oh, you would never let him part from you again. That is why I can never be happy as you are happy. Can't you understand? But suppose that that terrible confession that we listened to two nights ago should prove not to be true. But it is true. 
and thought and purpose, yes, but, but suppose that what had been planned and prepared with such desperate resolve was never carried out, and that what he believed had happened on that dreadful Christmas Eve was no more than a frenzied vision of distorted brain. No, no, he says this now only to escape the gallows. I do not believe him. Oh, I do not ask you to believe him. <laughs> I will believe no one unless I saw Eddie here before my eyes, living as he lived. And then... Helena. Rosa? Eddie! Eddie! <laughs> I rather fancy, Miss Landless, that you are wanted below. Oh, yes, yes, we will wait for them there. <laughs> You are safe, safe. Oh, why did you go away? That you shall know when there's time. A month ago, when I never thought to see England again, I learned by chance that Neville Landless was accused of my murder. Since then, I have traveled day and night and only in, arrived in London this morning. So, Mr. Gracious oh, has told you. Yes. He has told me all. I know what you have suffered, what Landless has suffered. And it was to save him that you came back? Not only for that. Before I heard of this terrible accusation, there was something that was drawing me home. The further I journeyed, the nearer it came to me, the vision of your face as I left you on that fatal Christmas Eve, till at last I could endure it no more. I, I felt I had lightly thrown away the one thing I would give the world with, to win. Rosa, look at me. Is it too late? Too late, too late. Oh, Eddie, if I can believe it true. It is true. The day we parted, I had upon me a ring that once belonged to your mother. I, I, ha I have it upon me now. Can you, in your heart, say the one word that will make it yours, or must I send it back once more? Don't send it back. Oh. Rosa! <laughs> Let me keep it till I die. Mm, I, I'm sorry, but... Time presses. I am ready. To Cloisterham, to him. I will go with you. I am not afraid anymore. But come, come then, but before we go, the, the ring I gave you, you have it safely? No, sir. It is not lost? No, dear guardian. It is found. Act 4, Tableau 2, a room in the prison infirmary leading to the apartment where Jasper is confined. You are determined to stay with him tonight. How could I do otherwise? Of what use is this office I hold if I were to shirk its highest duties? You are right, and yet I dread the thought of leaving you with him. Have you no fear for yourself? None. And even if I had, do you think I could refuse the prayer of a dying man? You believe them that he is dying? The prison doctor says he cannot have many hours strength. Sometimes his mind wanders, but he returns again and again to the one prayer that he may see Rosa Bud before he dies. I doubt if she will have the courage or the strength to face such an ordeal. Helena left for London at daybreak. She will give her both her best, her noble example throughout this terrible time should make us all brave. I think I hear him moving. Leave us now and have no fear. Did she come? Not yet. But you ought not to have risen. You have not the strength. No. No strength. Yeah, I must live. Lives as she is here. I wonder how you can bear to touch me. You have made the one atonement that was left of you. The judgment of man can ask no more. 
Yes, but don't you know why? Nothing else could have moved me. Nothing but the sight of that girl at my feet, ready to give her life for the life of the man I sought to ruin and destroy. It was her voice alone that forced me to speak. I, Jasper, and another and a higher voice that found its echo in here. No, I was deaf to that. It was silenced too long ago. You can't understand. You whose better nature turns to the light as a flower to the sun. What can you know of the fiercer thoughts that throng a murderer's brain? A thousand times in my opium dreams I had seen him lay dead at my feet. And yet each vision only drew me nearer to the goal. And then when it was done, it seemed no more than a dream. Would to heaven it had been no more. Listen, since last night this image has been always been before me. That is not strange, you'll say. Murderers are halted by the faces of their victims. Aye. But it is not his face as he lay drugged upon the bed that night. It is gone. But what follows? Oh. The face of an orphan child as he came to me long ago face of that boy I loved of my own son. Through the infinite mercy of heaven, it may be you shall meet that face again in the world to come. There can be no mercy for me who have shown none. Till she knelt at my feet two nights ago, and the thought of pity had entered into the ray heart. Now oh, it's too late. Jasper, it is not too late even now. All last night I heard her singing as she sang on that evening. What years ago? He turned his charger as he spoke beside his river shore. He gave his bride away, shaped to see forevermore. He And then the tears, you remember? I have heard them dripping like rain all through the night. I could hear them now. There's no way to stay them. Heaven will find a way. <laughs> There's someone at the door. She come? There was no sound. But she will come! Swear to me that she will come. If my message reaches her in time, I'm sure she will come. Yes, that's it. The time is so short. I have no strength. It is ebbing fast. Lead me back. I must say what is left of my strength till she come. Pray to God that I might live until then. She will come, yes, but... Will it be too late? Who is that? It is I, Rosa. Thank God. I will bring him to you here at once. Oh, stay. There is no time to lose. The hand of death is already upon him. No, no, he need not die. Edwin escaped that night. He is living. He's here. Here? Impossible. This is a dream. <gasps> No, it is the truth, the, the terrible crime of which he has accused himself. That was the dream, the last frenzied vision of a guilty soul. But the ring, the vault. The ring? The vault? The ring was returned to me on that night when we thought he met his death. Horrified at the discovery of Jasper's cruel purpose, he fled from Cloisterham and from England. But he has returned and he is here. Oh, let us go to him, Eddie and I, hand in hand, together. W where is he? There. But his strength is gone. His mind is breaking. I don't know how he will bear it. You're keeping the truth from me. She is here. I heard her voice. 
to do in a thousand, I a thousand miles away, and I should always see the same song. It's a do forever, more, my dear. A do forever, more. And then the tears. I have tears. I can't hear them anymore. No, there shall be no tears anymore. You see, I was right. She is <laughs> I am weak. Can you bear to come nearer to me, Rosa? A word, one word, no more. I killed him because I thought you loved him. Oh no, it is not true. All true. But now if he were living, I would pray God you might be together again. Love till the end. He's dead. He's dead. No, he lives. Where, where's Eddie? Oh, Mr. Gray, just bring him quickly. Oh, tell the Dean I am quite well, quite well. Ned, where's Ned? He's right here. It's too late. He wouldn't be warned. Now it is too late. It is the wine, Ned. Nothing more. The wine. The past. Why do you follow me here? Drugs. Give it to me. A drink. Another. Another. Jack! No! No, don't come near me! Take it away! Take it away! He is there! He's still going for Take it away! Take it away! Jack! Jack, don't you know me? You're left. And Rosa. Ned, she's going to sing to us tonight. It was I who taught her. And then when the new year comes, you and she are to wed. <laughs> That'll be a day for Cloisterim. Such a day. Give me your hand, Rosa. Yours, Ned. There. Oh, now. And remember. No tears. No tears. Is a do forever, no, my dear.